right, what we'd like to do for you is compare a mainline hydronic expansion tank and some of its competition. Show you the little differences and really what the features and benefits are um, of the mainline product, what really differentiates it. Because, look, everybody's tank is gray and that's for a reason. Matter of fact, Extrol, the sister tank to mainline, is about to celebrate its 60th anniversary. It was the first diaphragm expansion tank, period, is what kind of got Amtrol on the map. And mainline takes advantage of a lot of what we've learned over those six decades. First and foremost, if you look at these tanks, although they're similar on the outside, there are some key differences that allow the main line to outperform these and have some real benefits. First and foremost, we look at the shells, and they all look kind of similar. They've got this deep drawn steel, which is cold worked on all of these, that increases the strength. That's a good thing. But then when we look at the way the domes are joined together, we see that the main line and this Watts tank both use deep drawn steel and they're welded. You see the MIG weld running around the circumference. Whereas this Zilmet tank, Italian import, uses a crimp design right here. So you take the two halves and they're simply crimped together. Now it's a clever design because it allows you to eliminate a weld and it also traps the diaphragm between these two halves separating the air and the water side of the tank. But the end result is a limitation of 75 psi because above that this crimp actually starts to open up. The metal bends the other way. Unlike a welded tank like the main line which is rated to 100 psi. Now the Watts is a little bit different although it's got the weld, deep drawn steel, domes. We notice that it's also 75 psi. And the reason for that is when you weigh a Watts tank against a mainline tank, size for size, this happens to be a two versus a four gallon, it's about 10% lighter. And that translates into the steel gauge itself. And that limits the working pressure in this case. It goes a little bit further than that when we're talking about the strength of the tank as well, because the Watts tank has a limitation in terms of installation. They don't let you mount it horizontally, so it has to be vertical. Whereas mainline does not have that limitation. So if the tank is to be installed horizontally to save space, which we all know is a premium in today's mechanical rooms, the connector is strong enough to support the tank laying on its side, suspended, even if it were to waterlog without undue bending or any sort of damage right here. Whereas the Watts tank, they're not quite comfortable because when we do bend testing, we find this is a much more flexible connection. It will tend to bend if the tank is laid uh, over on its side. Okay, so that's a little bit of an advantage in terms of flexibility when it comes to today's heating systems and the limited space that we have. If we turn the tanks around and we look at the air side. Okay, this is the air stem where the tank is charged. They all use a Schrader type valve. The big difference here is mainline uses a projection welded valve stem. So we take this plated steel valve and we projection weld. It's almost like a spot weld. It joins it hermetically right to the base metal. So there's no sort of uh, physical uh, mechanical seal here. It's welded right into the steel dome. When we look at the Zilmet tank, in this case, you can even see, if we zoom in, a little bit of red right there. That's a gasket. This is a mechanical fit. You can see that with a pair of pliers, I've been fooling around and kind of spinning it. So it's a steel air stem, which is good, but not welded. It's not hermetically sealed in any way. It's actually relying on a little thin, flat gasket. Look, you lose a couple of pounds over the course of the life of the tank, and that can translate into the diaphragm overextending and certainly popping the relief valve on the boiler. The Watts tank uses a Schrader valve, which is a good thing. But in this case, it's actually press fit. There's no weld. See that? So it's a brass air stem, kind of nice looking not going to corrode, but it's press fit into the shell. So again, this is the only welded type air stem. Amtrol is the only one using that and mainline also uses that. Something else to notice, the Zilmet does have a 14 PSI pre-charge. Now, more is better, uh, you might say, but in this case, 12 PSI is the industry standard for a reason. That's because that's what fill valves come set out in the boiler. So if this is not brought down to 12 pounds in a traditional residential system, right away the pressure in the system is going to spike to 14 and the tank won't actually start to operate until the boiler pressure exceeds 14 pounds. So uh, it sounds like it might be an advantage, but in reality, 12 PSI is the industry standard for a reason. That's where we want to match the boiler fill pressure, and that's the case here. When we start looking at things like the connector, you see you've got a hex here on the watts. You've got a hex connector here, something to grab onto. On the Zilmet, it's a nice way to save money, but there's no hex. This is just a fitting welded onto the tank. And so when this is mounted on an air purger like this, there's not enough space to grab that with any sort of tool. So it's got to be hand tightened in. So we're always placing stress on the connector when we spin it on by hand and torque it. And then if you ever need to go and take that connector out. We all know what carbon steel can do. If there's oxygen in the water, this happens to be a Watts piece. That's going to get locked in there and you're going to need a Sawzall and an easy out to try to salvage that. 
a lot of cases the purger just gets cut out right with the tank. So without something to grab onto, this presents a real service challenge in the field. And finally, when we actually look at where these are manufactured, Mainline is 100% made in the USA. The entire lineup is made in the USA. It's ARRA compliant, great for government jobs. And again, guys in our industry, I mean, this is a big thing, and Amtrol is proud to be one of the last remaining manufacturers of plumbing heating expansion tanks in the United States. Matter of fact, when it comes to inline tanks like this, we are the only manufacturer where every model is made here in the States. Zilmet, this happens to be an Italian import, big company, big European company. Uh, they make a lot of expansion tanks for foreign markets, but uh, this is an import as well. And then the Watts, um, currently Watts is a company called PAE in Taichung, Taiwan. Uh, so this is a Taiwanese manufacturer. Visually, it's a pretty good knockoff of a mainline tank, but as we just saw, there's some real differences behind the scenes. All right, hopefully this helps you and helps you understand the differences. Although they're all gray, once you start looking beneath the paint, there's some real advantages to that mainline product.